Hey folks, welcome to Waldingham, Surrey, just outside Catrum and Wallingham. So I'm going to do a circular walk today. I'm going to go up the hill. I want to see the top level of Waldingham. Then I'm going to come back across country to Waldingham Garden Village, drop down to the Marden Park area, and then back to the station. I will put the details on the bottom of the screen now so that you can see the distance, elevation, approximate time and that kind of thing. Without further ado, let's walk and talk. I've just found this uh, Waldingham Country Walk map, which is difficult to see. Let's do a little visual of it. Now, I didn't know this existed, Waldingham Countryside Walk. It may well be the walk I'm doing today. And uh, so I'll leave it there for a little bit, but before I go too far and start walking up the hill, I'm pointing the camera at a fence and you think, why is he pointing the camera at a fence? Well, that's the climb up to the top of the village. And when I was about 14 or 15, a few of us came up here with our bikes and obviously whizzing down the hill is great fun, but it's quite a tight turn and I didn't negotiate it very well as a vehicle goes by. So, so I came down the hill, just so that you can imagine it, and I crashed into that fence. It wasn't that fence then, it was a much lower fence, angled slightly, probably from other people that had crashed into it. Uh, so obviously it's been long repaired. I was okay. The bike was sort of okay after some running repairs. Now this walk mainly came about from a visit to the Surrey County Council website. Well, they've got a number of Explore Surrey walks. And because I'd always planned to do a Waldingham walk, I thought, well, if they've uh, worked it out for me and done some research, then why not leave the front entrance of the ticket office onto the car park, done. And then it says, go straight up the hill using the right-hand pavement. And after passing the electricity substation, turn right. This might give a better idea of how easy it is for a teenager on a push bike to build up a head of steam coming down here. So yeah, there's one bend there. I probably just about negotiated that bit and didn't appreciate what was to follow. So we've got the substation up here, landmark number one. And that's station road at substation. Now we've got some steps here. Please don't be Jacob's Ladder again. Now this is, this walk is badged as having challenging terrain. Now, I get that, so dress appropriately guys if you're going to once again follow the route. But we have had the most torrential rainfall I've ever known in the last few weeks. Less than a month ago when I did my Wallingham and uh, Jacob's Ladder Walk. It was really warm. Those days are gone for 2023. It wasn't far off Jacob's Ladder 2.0. So let's avoid heavy breathing and uh, I'll speed this up. the first view with the lovely uh, autumn colours. So we're going to head round here to the left. So we're heading through the residential estate built on land bought by Mr William Guilford after the railway was built in the late 19th century. Uh, there's a pattern there obviously that when the railways came it did lead to uh, 
a lot of house building, connecting these towns obviously with the city and beyond. So that was uh, Waldegan's story, much like many in the area and across the country, of course, and the globe. So the land was divided into lots of approximately one and a half acres each and sold for housing. Guildford would only permit houses of more than £400 in value. It was stipulated that all buildings except lodges must stand at least 25 feet from the road and could not be used for industry. I'm adding a bit onto the route that's published on the Surrey website. I'll, um, I'll put the link below as usual because I wanted to head up to the top of the top of the town, top of the village, so that we can say we've seen it all. But I was very keen to come out today. I've been very busy with various projects lately, but you have to do these things when conditions allow rather than put something in your diary knowing that you can stick to it because typically you can't so first break I think we get some more rain again tomorrow and then it may break again and more films may happen but yeah one month on what a difference but I'm warming up after that climb I'm glasses are going steamy So Parkview Road, this is a, the road we've just uh, walked along, a, a gentle climb. I quite like it when the arc of the sun is that bit lower. I can find good in every season. This was really another way of walking straight up Station Road because we come back onto Station Road now. And I'm going to do a right and keep going right. <coughs> so south down road we're coming out of. Seen a few cyclists today. No doubt they've been keen to get out when the weather's a bit more pleasant. Hope they know what to do when they get down the hill. Another splendid church there. St Paul's Church with St Agatha. And have a nice view from the side. Hold the view while the light hits it. Yeah, so we're now on the added section and it's almost like a, a loop within a loop, so it's not far up here and just just check it out, tick it off as it were and then go back and join the walk, which it's more of the countryside from this very pretty village, a little uh, sports ground just over there tennis going on. And where the shops are it's called the Crescent but I'm going to go past that to go to the Green and then walk back via the Crescent. Make our way back to the original Surrey walk. There's a teaser. Remembrance uh, items out on display, soldiers, poppies, that kind of thing. I run the risk of being splashed by the heavily numerous puddles that are around at the moment. So, where possible, I might have to suddenly dart to my right to avoid a driver who might just want to have a laugh. 
So far, so good. Now, this isn't particularly sun friendly. I wonder. I wonder what that is. Was shelter something, perhaps? Shelter entrance? Haven't seen it in any books, but maybe didn't look hard enough, and maybe it's nothing of the sort anyway. Looks like a manhole cover or something on the other side, but it could be. If you know what that mound is, whether it served a purpose or not, please write in the comments, and I would be very grateful. Lovely houses here, some of the early buildings. So it's a nice green area, very pleasant, very peaceful. I guess it is the village green of sorts. Uh, not really surrounded by businesses per se, and uh, no cricket square in the middle. But there was a village stores, come tea room, come, well, so one, one report I read said it mostly sold biscuits. It's quite a walk if you came to the station. I think this was, yeah, now a private residence. It says formerly the Hot Pole, opened 1862, closed 1884, now a private residence. And a very nice one at that. So very nice indeed. And then you can see a slightly better angle there on the, the older houses and the green itself. Without the sun hitting the camera in an aggressive way. So a number of roads feed off this particular area. Swines Oak Road goes up to Chelsham ultimately. I have to be a bit careful here because it's not completely footpathed. Nice flint cottages in there. Yew tree cottages. Aldingham Village Hall. I think I played a gig there with my band in the 1980s. As promised, we are back on the Crescent. The Pleasant Crescent. Little scout hut there. I think we played the scouts at football once. Another scout group at Wallingham. First Tamsy Green, Wallingham Methodist. At about the time I was crashing my bike down the bottom. Not at the same time, obviously. They've got nice village stores here. Where would we be without our little local shops? So not a huge age to some of these, but still the community all the same. And then we've got the, uh, the poppies there with different references on them. Craig Mile Glebe, Children's Playground, Waldingham Tennis Club, Waldingham Village Cricket Club, Waldingham Village Football Club. So lots of sporting activity there. The forecast said it would be breezy today and uh, it's a good test for the 
wind protector I have on the microphone. The uh, war memorial here, but what a stunning poppy display that is. Amazing. Right, we now head down Long Hill. Already we've got that nice taste of autumn or fall depending on where you are in the world. And it's trying to get that time, that period when the leaves are on the trees and to be viewed in their glory and colour. Because if I came out and tried this walk in maybe a couple of weeks time, then uh, they'd be on the ground. Uh, so I, I think I've probably got the sweet spot I was looking for. Look at that. How wonderful is that? Having checked my bearings and the notes, it says you would normally, if you do the other route, you're going to come from this footpath here. That's from Station Road, a little narrow footpath. And then there's a 10 o'clock public footpath and a one o'clock public footpath and it says take the 10 o'clock. So here goes. Follow this for 850 meters passing first between houses and then through a section of woodland. Sounds nice. bonus of full sun today with occasional dipping behind the clouds or clouds passing in front of the sun. So this is known as Madeira Walk. And it says when we emerge from the trees there are excellent views to the left. I think for this path, the sheltered aspect of it, with leaves on trees still providing some shelter, has meant that it's perhaps not as muddy as it could be. It's not fully exposed to all the elements. The leaves provide a bit of a carpet. Distant hum of a petrol leaf blower. I'm telling you that because it may not be clear on the audio. I wouldn't go as far as inserting a sound effect, but... And yes, such things exist. So we are opening out a bit more here. We've gone past the... residential section. It certainly does fall away here. I, I don't quite know how it can best be represented uh, but I guess if you see that's the level ground if I pan around it's uh, we're now at the level of you know halfway up the trees not halfway up the stairs much brighter ahead. There we go. It does open out very nicely. He's gone from those uh, trees in the middle there. Eh?
smaller leaved varieties. I will read to you, it says you are looking at the gentle dip slope of the North Downs and across the Catron Valley. The valley is one of a number of dry valleys which run north-south across the line of the North Downs and are thought to have been cut by north flowing rivers after the last ice age. The open area near to the path is a remnant of chalk grassland which has a rich variety of plants. Yeah, so this is the chalk grassland immediately here which you can see lots of evidence of over at uh, Farthing Down and Causton Common. Yeah, really, really quite stunning views. Beautiful. The chalk lending itself to a more solid footpath, thankfully. Lots of tree roots to be aware of. Pass on the bench for now, I'll keep going. Long Hills Grasslands, there we go, some information. Downlands Trust. I do like these tree tunnels. Look at that. Found some sun. You never quite know what you're going to find on these walks. But that's just a, definitely a kind of stop and stare moment. I almost don't want to go any further. Look at that beauty. I will move on and let you stay there and rest. Soak up the sun. Well, that was something, wasn't it? You, you don't really know what you're going to see. We're in early November. So far, I'm keeping to my one walk per month target. I've already got in mind where I'm going to go next month. Obviously, I'm not going to share it yet. Which will be the Christmas walk. Although it seems that the whole world has gone mad from the 1st of November and that Christmas is almost upon us. So it pointed out this junction. There we go, Madeira Walk. Public footpath that away with some steps. Right away this way. So yeah, this is a, a real junction here, isn't it? They're slightly right here, about one o'clock, to climb the shallow steps. I see shallow steps. That was almost a, one of those things that catch you up. I see shallow steps. Not on the seashore. Keep straight ahead on the path between the fences, yeah. You will emerge to a crossroads with a narrow tarmac lane. Do not take the footpath which continues opposite. Instead turn right along the residential road. That's all me. So again a mixed surface, some concrete. And the odd route. But overall not too bad. Right, what mustn't I do? I must not go straight ahead, I must turn right. And right, I am turning. Oh, 
Right, I am now in Waldingham Garden Village. The Waldingham Garden Village originally built at the beginning of the First World War to house the public schools battalion of the Middlesex Regiment. As war casualties mounted, it was converted into a convalescent camp. There is a comprehensive programme of entertainment organised for the residents and people from Waldingham Village used to walk to the camp along Madeira Walk, where we've just been, to attend. The founder of the Garden Village was Henry Fuller Morris. He was a scrap merchant and was once the Mayor of Bermondsey. He bought the camp just after the war for about £10,000. Small properties were badly wanted as homes for heroes and many of the buildings were converted into bungalows. A number of these are still standing today. So follow this tarmac road around the village. Ignoring any footpath signs. But actually, yeah, there's no really high buildings here. Some of them with a couple of stories are sort of built into the hill. Keeping the theme, I suppose, of the, uh, the original properties. Probably under the uh, planning regulations as well. I assume I've not checked that fact. Let me turn down here. When I plot these maps, they always seem so much larger in distance, larger and longer, but when you actually do them, I think that's one thing I've learnt by doing this is we get, well, we are constrained by the road system if you want to get anywhere by car, obviously. But when you actually get out on foot, you realise just how easily and simply some of these places are connected. Junction with Hilltop Walk. Turn right. Now it says, follow it to draw level with the property High Shore on the left. and then turn right to join the bridle way okay Whoops. The, uh, the water has formed a channel. It shows okay on the camera there. I don't know, in theory that would be a smoother way to walk, wouldn't it? But I'll slow down a bit just in case. More nice colouring here with beach, I think. Sycamore. I'll just throw names out and then there's a chance that one of them will be right. Been a good year for chestnuts. I did a non-filmed walk, more of a recce walk, last week in between the showers again. And uh, it was a fantastic display of sweet chestnuts. There have been a lot of horse chestnuts this year as well. Maybe it's just a good year for the chestnuts and woodland fruits generally. Oh, I slept there. Live. <laughs> we 
we have tarmac and we have the most beautiful chimneys there's a picture of this place on the uh, leaflet Ways. So it says at the bottom I'm going to emerge with a junction with the main road away road. And that's the way I actually came in at the beginning. So sort of looped back a little bit to where we started, but there's another section to go. This is very well made here, block paving. Mightily impressive. Could be a challenge in the uh, icy weather. Got me thinking if this road was an original main road up the hill, it turns sharply off pretty straight mm. I missed that in my map analysis if that was the case that'll be for part two so in sharp left along Park Lee Road public bridleway away sign Park Lee Road aha uh -huh. just a short distance 40 meters then fork right down the bridleway to reach a T-junction with Waldingham Road. Actually, I will just point out the nice building here Lovely roof, lovely style. Fly over here and see a bit better. One of those standout buildings whenever you go past here. I go to the garden centre up the road here. Knights on the left. And this is my next turn. Signed to Gatwick and Red Hill. That's what that says there. Here we go. I'm kind of reading ahead to what might be coming up. That looks like uh, it may have come down perhaps this year. It's still growing. Okay, the things you see. Oh, I'll let you pass. Sorry. Okay, no problem at all. Yeah. The very best of luck to him on this terrain. But he's got the gear for it. Junction with Tarmac Drive. And it says turn left. And an information update. The valley you are now walking through is called Marden Park. The Marden Park estate was established in the middle of the 17th century when a wealthy London banker and Lord Mayor of London called Sir Robert Clayton decided to build a luxurious country house for himself. He bought the desolate valley of Marden from Sir John Evelyn of Godston and Clayton's heirs continued to live here for many years. Well, there's, yeah, there was that one gap. Folks, where would a Phil's walk and talk be without a train? Follow the driveway as it swings right to reach a railway bridge. Very impressive railway bridge. 
take extreme care to pass under the bridge and stay on the drive as it swings left. Oh, I'm taking care as a car comes by. I'm still taking care. I took care. Okay, so we go round. Stay on the drive, it says. This is a beautiful valley. And I'm noticing on the right some staked trees. I think we're going to head round there so we'll see them a bit closer. <clears throat> and that's what we saw in the distance when we were on Madeira Walk. I'm assuming, I think it is, it all kind of lines up roughly the way, uh, the, way the walk was rooted. It's got the feel of one of those large country estates that we have in England here. You know, the grand entrance road, tree-lined and the field system all sort of fenced off. Should probably walk on the grass here just to make it safer for all. Whilst uh, clear sky and unbroken sunshine are always welcome. Certainly this time of year. It's still quite attractive to have the odd cloud formation going over, as long as they're not rain clouds. I don't know if the, uh, the trees are being managed or they just kind of died or were diseased, but there's some trees down on the left section and then the staked newly planted trees on the right. So continue along the driveway, you will pass the old lodge property on the left. Which I'm taking as this. Very pleasant property. And the station buildings behind, so at the rear there is the station buildings. I always try and break it up with something. Some kind of plane, train or automobile. Or all three. This is interesting. With the exception of one, they're all laying down. We know what that means. Rainy weather. However, over here, they're all standing up. One's doing a wee. So the forecast is sunshine and showers, according to the cows of Marden Park. I now turn in this direction, I think, I hope. I'll see these lovely animals. I won't bug you, honest, but you are now on YouTube. <laughs> they kind of stop, a bit like cats do. So what are you after? You're going to moo at me? Go on, moo. Go on, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> I haven't got any food. They're following me now. I'm friendly, honest. And what have we over here? I spy a llama. And uh, some sheep. Sheep wandering over. One spot is something. Here, look, have a look over here. Look what I've found. Steady. You were meant to do it when I was pointing the camera at you. Okay, so some information. I'm pretty certain I'm on the right path, but I'm delighted with what I've seen anyway. Hope you are as well, guys. 
A wealthy stockbroker, Sir Walpole Lloyd Greenwell, bought the modern park estate from the Claytons in 1906. Sir Walpole and his son Bernard kept what was considered to be the finest collection of racehorses in the county. Marden Park Farm was built for their stud of Shire horses, which was thought to be the best in England. In the Second World War, Marden Park itself, which is where the school is, was home to many Canadian troops. Canadians helped us immensely during World War II. And one of those Canadian troops met up with a young lady from Catrum, and that was my mate's mum and dad. So property called Shires ahead, correct. And it says go through the gap just to the right of this property and follow the path alongside the hedge. Continue along the paved section between the converted stables and barns to reach a T junction. So through the pathway. Right away. And it says continue through this area and reach a T junction. This is actually the last section. Yeah, lots of opportunities for recreation and fitness. So the lane swings right, leading you over the railway bridge, and then swings left to continue running parallel to the rail line down to the left. And I'll talk a bit about the railway line on the last section. Another nice view of the valley. Another train. I'm spoiling you rotten today. So this road runs parallel to the railway line and take us back to where we started. And that line from Croydon through Oxley to East Grinstead was built by the London, Brighton and South Eastern Railway Company and opened in 1884. Now Aldingham Station was originally known as Marden Park and was very simple with one small shelter and as we were right by Marden Park Lodge and we looked behind to see the station building in the distance. It would make sense that it was called Marden Park Station, but Waldingham is a climb up the hill, as we've seen today. It's a little way off. I'm sure there were some forms of transport to get up there, horse and cart or taxis or whatever. Or you can just follow this walk. Still a reasonably nice colour impact when the clouds cover the sun, but not quite the same. No one at the station when I arrived, but there's a few people there patiently waiting for the next service to perhaps Croydon or beyond. So that was the walk. That was Waldingham. It was good to get out after the terrible weather we've had. Please feel free to have a look round at any of the other videos of my walks in the series. There's various playlists, etc. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.